It's also a hard day for somebody else who leads the Republican Party, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Hard in, in the way we look at it from a political perspective, and that's because for Leader McConnell, the majority, the one he's held for six years, might be slipping away right now thanks to Georgia. And that's just one of the problems he's facing. His iron grip on the Senate GOP loosening with a lot of people, at least a dozen, breaking from him by supporting these electoral college objections. We have learned that McConnell is getting ready to give a major speech as all of this unfolds. A source familiar with the plans tells NBC News he's going to be the first Republican speaker during the first objection debate. You will hear from him early on in the process. I want to bring in now Antonia Ferrier, former press secretary to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Antonia, it's great to have you back on. You know Leader McConnell uh, very well, perhaps like few other people do. And this may be a rare moment, maybe, where we see Senator McConnell publicly put some of his own people on notice, right? What are your expectations for what he might say this afternoon? Well, you know, Senator McConnell is sort of like Paul Newman and Cool Hand Luke, and I expect that's how he'll handle today. Um, he's going to be a sober voice, and he's going to express that he, why he objects to the objectors. Um, he is a man who believes in the institutions of this country. He has already said that he accepts that Joe Biden is going to be the next president of the United States, and he's going to explain why. Um, it is not the Congress's role to try and overturn the will of the people. There's been a peaceful transition of power since the founding of our republic, and that's exactly how we should continue moving forward. But if there are members on the Republican side, and we know there are, who have objections, their objections will be heard. But at the end of this, uh, President Biden, incoming President Biden, will be certified as the next president of the United States. He has called it, Antonia, a vote of conscience, according to uh, Senator Kevin Kramer, who we had on our show just yesterday, uh, clearly telling his members that this is the most, as Senator Kramer said, most important vote they may take here. We talked about, and you and I talked about this before, Leader McConnell has a very strong grip on his party. Do you see this as potentially a turning point for your former boss, a kind of watershed moment as he looks ahead now to 2022? Uh, I don't, because I think, Hallie, he's had to deal with many challenges in his career, professional career as leader. Uh, we have to remember back during the Obama years, there were constant threats to try and shut down the government over the Affordable Care Act. He fought those tooth and nail. Um, he was frequently on the other side of Senator Ted Cruz on that. So I, I think this is an important and historic moment for the country. He's going to be on the right side of history, um, you know, that group of 12, four incoming freshmen. I hope this is a learning experience for them. They can vote their conscience, and hopefully moving forward, they'll understand that touching the stove isn't always a wise move. Let me pull back and get the big picture view from you. Um, Senator Mitt Romney on Capitol Hill, just within the last couple of minutes, as you and I were talking, according to our team, uh, said that it turns out of Georgia, that telling the voters the election is rigged is not a great way to turn out your voters. A rather blunt assessment of what went down in Georgia, what is going down in Georgia from Senator Romney. You also have Josh Holmes, I know you know, former chief of staff to uh, Mitch McConnell, saying about the suburbs specifically, we went from talking about jobs and the economy to QAnon election conspiracies in four short years. And as it turns out, suburban voters were listening. What should the takeaways be for your party here? Well, I mean, if you're a party trying to win an election and you're fighting each other, you're trying to beat the other side, that generally doesn't work. And so Josh is right. Uh, Senator Romney are right. You have to be unified to win. There were, we were a circular firing squad. We went from a good position in November to a position where it looks like we're losing two Senate seats in the state of Georgia. That's insane. Uh, suburban voters matter. There are just not enough voters out there in rural America to be enough for a Republican coalition to win the White House and hold the Senate and the House. But having said that, look, there are other opportunities moving forward. The Senate, thankfully, is a 60-vote institution, and there's going to have to be working across the aisle. Uh, incoming President Biden knows that. Mitch McConnell knows that. So does Chuck Schumer. So it was not a good day for Senator McConnell or Senate Republicans, but the lesson learned here is pretty simple. Don't attack each other. Fight up against the other side. Antonia Ferrier, thank you very much for your perspective and for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. We want to show you now a live look at the Save America rally as it's being.